Hey, welcome everybody, it's Chris here. Uh, today we're gonna to talk a little bit about uh, a decision-making scenario to run through, uh, and it is to whether or not to, to keep, refinance, or sell a 2019 Honda Fit. So, uh, as many of you maybe, I, I browse, the, browse the web a good bit, I look at Reddit, and last couple weeks I, I got caught up in a thread Somebody was looking for some guidance and help on, on what to do. They were in over their head. Uh, they, they were locked into a 20% interest rate or more. It was not clear, but she said greater than 20% was the interest rate on her car. She had 60 plus uh, months left to pay on it, and it wasn't, wasn't clear exactly how many months. And that she had her payments were $470 a month, which she felt she could handle. Um, and she was just looking for options, and of course, the internet is full of opinions and I had mine and mine was to sell the car, uh, to take a loan to cover the loss, buy a car you could afford uh, and just move on. And of course uh, there was people with counter opinions. I heard other things like that's the worst advice ever or that's dumb advice or stupid advice and, uh, and I can take it. I think uh, I'm in, uh, everyone's entitled to their opinion but what I did want to work through was just the math behind my opinion and the decision that I would make. And so it's not uncommon to find yourself uh, underwater on a loan that you've taken out to buy a thing. So it could be a house, it could be a car, it could be a motorcycle, it could be a boat. It happens all the time where you buy something that was either overpriced to start or you bought something and then the market tanks for whatever reason and things that were of particular value one day all of a sudden lose value because there's just not the demand in the following days. So, so we're just going to work through that. So without further ado, let's check out uh, some spreadsheets and, and some of the math behind how you could make a decision yourself uh, for this kind of predicament. All right, we're online. We're looking at a we're looking at the MSRP for a 2019 Honda Fit. So, uh, we're talking to this gal on Reddit. It's you know her her situation was this that she owned a 2019 Honda Fit she owed uh, between 19,000 and 18,500 depending on when she was going to make a payment uh, she had a 20% rate of return and she had over 60 months worth of uh, payments to make left on the loan so that was the information that we had and then there was a number of us and they're giving her advice on what the best thing to do was and some of the advice was just get a better uh, get a better rate, refinance at a better rate, which is always, if you have a, an option to refinance a loan at a better rate and there's no kind of additional closing costs or anything like that, always do it, without doubt. Um, however, you may not always be able to refinance at a better rate. Uh, you know, if, uh, if your credit is such that you, you, can't, you can't get that, then that is not an option. And so then you have to start looking at a plan B or a plan C and that type of stuff. And in the context of this conversation about helping, helping this gal make a, a decision, my recommendation was to sell the car, right? To uh, take a loss, uh, take a loan out because she's, she wasn't going to be able to probably sell it for what she owed. And, uh, and then we can see that by looking at this screen here, right? That it looks like they started about 1619 and that's probably new. Uh, hers was not new, it was used. And uh, and she owed eighteen five. So my suggestion was, you know, take out a three thousand dollar loan, sell the car for fifteen thousand five hundred to help it move a little bit faster. She might have had to take out a bigger loan than that even, right? But we'll say a three thousand dollar loan to sell it, um, and then buy a car that she can afford. Spend maybe ten thousand dollars on a car that's going to be reliable. It won't break down. You'll have to put standard maintenance into it, but you do that with any car, right? So that was my advice. And there was, you know, and I got a, a, a bit of feedback saying that's the worst advice, that's horrible advice, um, and that's, that's fine, right? I think everybody's entitled to their opinion, but it got me thinking, you know, and, and I have a kid and she has lots of friends, and, and I think they're all going to go through the same, the same exact circumstance of, of being enticed to buy a new car, potentially getting in over their heads, and then having some real buyer's remorse about the, the purchase that they made and then how do I get out of this because now this this thing that I thought I could afford is actually a it's a huge boat anchor weighing me down so I wanted to start by looking at uh, a loan calculator to start right so let's let's recreate the situation with 
we have a loan for eighteen thousand five hundred. We've got uh, term payments that are sixty. Well, oh, actually, sixty four. 64 months, not 64 years. So let's go 64 months, and we have an interest rate of 20%. She said 20 plus, but I couldn't get the math to work um, to, to get a rate. Uh, that's fine. We'll go 64. Calculate. Okay, so it gives us a, rate, uh, a monthly amount of $472, which is about what she said she was spending a month, and she said she could afford this. Uh, and without prying too much into what her monthly income was, um, what her credit score is, which are a couple of variables that you want to know, the amount of income you make on a monthly basis is absolutely, it's a fundamental driver into what you should be spending on a car. And so that wasn't part of the conversation, but I speculated that Maybe she was spending too much for what her income was. Um, and that's kind of why I advised, maybe you want to buy, and you want to pay less for a car overall. But so let's just work with what we've got. So we know we have these variables at play. 18.5 is what we owe. We're in it for 64 months. We've got a 20% rate of interest. So what we did was we moved all of this into Google Sheets. So we have this prepared. So I have a number of sheets. This is the, the current tab shows you the amortization schedule. So starting with the, the, the first day of the loan, um, all the way through the last day of the loan, what you're gonna be paying on a monthly basis and what your principal is and what you're paying towards interest. And you can say every month you're paying quite a bit towards interest. In the early part of the loan, you're paying a lot, right? Over $300 a month, you're making an interest payments and that's just interest. There's no value behind that. The car is certainly not gonna be worth any of that and so when it's all said and done you've paid 18,500 in principal you've paid 11,700 in interest for a total of over $30,000 right so over the five years that you'll be making payments on this loan you're gonna pay over $30,000 now if we look at the underwater well let's look at the before we do that let's look at the refinance option so one of the options that folks were advocating for was to just refinance, right? It's simple as that. Let's get a better loan, which makes 100% sense. So let's say, what if we have the same, uh, let's shorten it down to 60. If we're going to refinance, let's shorten it to 60, make it a five-year loan. Interest rate's 15%, $440 a month. Okay, so we're even saving money on a monthly basis. That's great. And we've, we've shrunk the payments down by four months. Uh, let's see what we copy that over into this and so we can see we've got the eighteen thousand dollar loan we're saving a bit of money on the loan so now we're paying seventy nine hundred in interest for a total of twenty six thousand dollars on this 2019 honda fit so we're saving some money now we're not we're saving about four thousand dollars maybe a little bit less than four thousand dollars which i'm a fan of saving uh, but you're still spending close to eight thousand dollars on interest and this car will not be worth nearly twenty-six thousand. Won't be worth nearly eighteen thousand after five years of driving it. And a lot of it depends on how you care for your car. But so my advice was to sell the car, right? And so let's take a quick shopping trip. I just opened up Atlanta's Craigslist, uh, and let's look for owner deals, right? It'll shrink this list down considerably. And so we're looking for something that's in the $10,000 range, right? And I don't, uh, um, you know, I'm, I like Honda, I like Honda, and she has a Honda. It's just I think she got a really high rate and might not have great, and I got a great price on it originally. Um, but let's see what we can find in the $10,000 range <clears throat> that might fit the bill. Oh, there's a nice, a nice Lexus. I like Lexus as well. I like Acuras as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, let's let's look for a Honda CRV since that's what I drive, and I'm a fan of them. Oh, yep, here it is. So I found this one earlier. And um, it, it is a, 
let's see what it is. it's a 2010 Honda CRV. It has uh, they're asking 10,500. Maybe they take less, right? You can, you can always try to negotiate a used car sale. Um, 88,000 miles. It's a uh, front wheel drive, so it's not an all wheel drive. I'm not sure if that's a if that's a requirement for this gal. It says here it is two wheel drive. Um, I have a Honda CRV, a 2000 model, so it's 10 years earlier than this even, and it's got over 100,000 miles. I still drive it. My kid has a 1998 Honda CRV, and it has 140,000 miles, and she drives it every day. Um, this is not a, this is not an advertisement for Honda CRVs. I probably make a different video on Honda CRVs, at least on mine, walk you through some of the, some of the issues that I've had, but it's been incredibly reliable. But so let's stick with this, right? In fact, I already prepped. The spreadsheet for this particular car because I found it earlier. Now, the new used car that we have this spreadsheet tab here for, we can see that we're going to principal is going to be 10.5, interest is going to be 3,500. Gives us a total cost for this car of $14,000 over a three-year term, uh, which is what we're calculating if we do 10.5 change the term to 36 months and let's stick with the 20 percent because it could be that a, a rate reduction is not going to be possible for her right okay so three hundred ninety dollars and twenty two cents is the the cost monthly cost to buy this car you can see the difference in principal and interest in these two columns now what what we haven't done is we haven't calculated out the cost of that what I'm calling the underwater loan. And this is the difference on the Honda Fit between what she, what she owes and what she's going to be able to get. And so I'm saying that she's going to have to borrow $3,000. We'll say it'll be a three-year term. And let's say she can't even get the greatest term or the greatest rate. Let's say she's going to have to go with a, a credit card rate, 25%, uh, just to get this covered, which gives it a, a 19, $119 a month, 28 cents. So we bake that into our calculations here. We've got this all set up. And so we can see we're gonna pay 3,000 to pay off the 3,000. It's gonna incur $1,294 for a total of $4,294. So those are, the, those are the three options that we have. We can, we can uh, stay with the current, which is not a great deal. We can look at a, a new used car. We can pay the extra amount in a loan to get rid of our fit, which isn't a good deal, or we can refinance the fit to make it a better deal. So all of those are encapsulated on this scenario tab here. And we can see we've got the sell car column, we've got the keep car column, and we've got the refinance car column. And all of this is, uh, one second, all of this uh, should be considered. Now, you can see this, this line here is the total cost of interest uh, for each of these scenarios. So if you're going to keep the car, you're going to pay $11,728 in interest. If you refinance the car, you'll be paying $7,906 in interest. And if you uh, sell the car, and buy a new car, and then, and then get a loan to pay the difference, your underwater difference on the fit, Honda Fit, then that gets baked into this as well. So you'll be paying $4,841 in interest. So the total cost for each of these cars is here. This includes interest. So for the, the selling the car and buying a new car, the total cost overall, this includes the, the cost of the car itself plus the loan to get rid of your other car is going to cost you $18,000. If you keep the car, you keep the rate, you pay off the car, you're paying $30,228. If you refinance the fit at a 15% rate, shorten the term to uh, 60 months rather than 64, you can see that your cost is $26,406. Right, so those are kind of the variables that you're playing with. Now, there's a, when we look at the how much you're going to pay, we've already talked about that. We've ranked these highest to lowest with your best deal, the best money deal being selling the car, taking out a loan to, to, to buy the car and to pay off the other car. Um, it's the lowest amount. It does increase your monthly rates by about 
you know, if you're currently paying 472, it's going to increase it by about 38, 39 dollars a month, and that could be a big deal. My suggestion is if that becomes a problem, you lower the amount that you're going to borrow on your new used car. You don't, uh, yeah, instead of buying a car for 10,000, you buy one for 9,000. That's too much. You buy one for 8,000. You start to ratchet it down, and so. In this column here, we can see the savings that is gained, right? And here's the term column. So the difference between keeping the car as is and getting a loan at a 15% rate is $3,800. So right out of the gate, if you can do that, do that. Now, I'm a fan of getting $3,800 for free. Uh, now, if you, can, if you think you're in over your head, you bought the wrong car, you bought a car you can't afford, you, you want to get out of your total $30,000 payment. Uh, you can sell the car, buy an affordable car, take out a loan to cover the difference that, you, that you're going to have to pay because you're underwater. You owe more for the car than it's worth, and in order to sell it, you have to take a loan out to cover that distant, difference. <clears throat> the difference between staying with what you got and the option where you buy a different car is $11,886, and this is important. Because, especially for young folks that aren't making that much, $11,000 is a lot of money over a five-year period. Um, it, you know, it's, it's the difference between having an emergency fund and not having an emergency fund. It's the difference between buying the next used car and not buying the next used car, right? You can buy a very high-quality used car for $12,000, which is close to what we're talking about here. So... Uh, you know, I feel it's important when you're when you're giving people advice. You know, the picture is generally going to be there's more more complexity in the picture than is often evident just by looking at a rate or looking at the amount of the car, right? Give it some thought, and so uh, you know that's that's worth considering. And then the difference between I have this down here. That's the difference between refinancing the car at 15 percent and then selling the car and uh, borrowing money to pay off the difference. So even if you're, you know, the, the, keeping the fit is just, it's not a real winning proposition at 20% or at 15%, if you ask me, for a young person who probably shouldn't be buying expensive cars to begin with. Uh, sounds like an old man talking, but <clears throat> there, there's some problems there when you get in over your head. And that's not specific to cars. It, it's true with houses. It's true with anything that you're buying then you're in financing. Right, whether it's a boat, a motorcycle, you name it. When you find finance something that you, uh, you you think you can afford, you convince your, yourself you can afford on a monthly basis, um, you you're, you could run into all kinds of problems. And 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 finance industry knows this, right? And so that's why you know I've heard from other guys, the money guys in particular, say you can buy anything for two hundred dollars a month, right? And you'll just be paying for it for the rest of your life. And if you're paying, you know, two hundred dollars a month, and it's a fifteen percent interest rate or a ten percent interest rate, yeah, they'll they'll run that out for ten or fifteen years, right? And then you're paying, you're paying tens of thousands of dollars just in interest, right? And it only takes enough of those two hundred dollar a month payments to stack up in your life before, all of a sudden, you have committed a large chunk of your disposable monthly income to these things that you may not be able to get out of so easily and, and, and none of these things appreciate in value so when you go to sell them there's a high chance that you will have to you'll be taking a loss on it so be very careful when you choose to finance things now let's wrap this up by looking at just the buying capacity that you should be thinking about so there's a general rule of thumb and if you research online you'll find that yeah, there's all kinds of opinions, but between eight and ten percent seems to be a reasonable target rate for you uh, to allocate towards spending on a vehicle. So if you're going to borrow money to spend on a vehicle, plan on spending no more than nine percent of whatever your take-home pay is. And so in this scenario, we'll say you have a take-home pay of twenty-four hundred dollars a month. And it's important to think of this in terms of month, not I make fifty thousand a year or make thirty thousand a year. Because your bills are paid monthly. So think about the amount of cash that comes into your house on a monthly basis. Multiply that times 9% and you're going to see that in this case it comes to $216 is the maximum amount that you should be financing. And you should finance it for no more than three years. So, so that's good to know. And you want to do that because you don't want to box yourself in 
right? It's, it's not about what you can afford. It's about what you should afford relative to all the other things that you need to do with your income, right? You don't want to load up, a, especially a car, right? And I think it's a young, as, I, as a young person myself, I wanted a nice car. And so to me, that became the most important thing. But I, I didn't factor in things like I should be saving. I should be saving for this. I should be doing other things with money. The car was the most important thing. And so in my mind, I inflated what I thought I could be able to afford, right? And I, I was a fool. There's just no two ways about it. But if we know that $216 is the maximum that we should spend, well, let's back in to see back in and into that and see what kind of car that gives us. So if I said, um, we'll say, and let's say we get a, you know, let's say we can, uh, are going to get a 15% interest rate. 36 is what we want. Um, let's see if I pop in $6,000. What am I going to get for a rate? Okay, so for a, I can borrow money to get a $6,000 car, and that will give me a $207 a month monthly rate, which if I'm making $2,400 a month, I could afford, right? It's not going to break the bank, um, and I will only have that, that loan for 36 months. If I do it for 24 months, let's see what the calculation is. $290. Ooh, so what if I was able to save $1,000, get the $6,000 car, and only take out a loan for $500? five thousand dollars okay I'm back into the zone right so I'm, I'm still outside of 216 but I'm getting there so maybe I save a little more or maybe I you know I wouldn't I wouldn't exceed I wouldn't exceed this amount here as, as, as hard as it is to, to, to draw hard lines I would try to get comfortable drawing hard lines so that's it in a nutshell so I I appreciated your time watching this hopefully it was helpful you know, basically trying to highlight that there is a case sometimes for selling things at a loss and borrowing money to cover the difference because in the long term, that is going to be your best money saving strategy. And as we've seen on, on this spreadsheet here, you know, doing that, even though in the short term, you feel it feels like the most crazy thing in the world to borrow money and take a loss to sell a thing. But over a five year period in this case, you can see that you've saved almost $12,000. And the question is, in over five years, what could you do with $12,000, right? And knowing that, why wouldn't you do that, right? And if it's one, one, one issue that we didn't really talk about was the, the, the value of the 2019 fit versus, in this case, the value of the 2020, 2010 Honda CRV and which one might last longer over a 20 year period. Uh, and, and you know, and I have a Honda that's lasted 20 years, and I bought it brand new, um, and that was back when interest rates were pretty low for me, and I did not pay a 20% interest rate, although I did pay a fair amount in interest, and I was a younger person, so um, you know, I wasn't I wasn't super savvy, uh, but um, you know, there there is that element. But I think if, if you're if you're in a position that you know you've already broken the first rule of you're paying too much of your income for the car, the interest rates aren't the most important thing. So the idea of refinancing isn't the thing, right? You can always try to get a better rate, but even with the best rate, you might still be spending 30% of your income, and that's the issue, right? That's in it. Spending 30% of your income on a car is always going to strap you in to not being able to do much more. You're going to have a hard time paying for housing. You're going to have a hard time saving money for anything. You're going to have a hard time taking trips with your friends when they want to go or with family. So, you know, hopefully this, this little exercise here provided you some insight to help support the idea that don't get in over your head. And also, if you do, you do have some options. And sometimes those options are counterintuitive. It means borrowing money to pay off something quickly and then downgrading accordingly. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a sign of a, that's a sign that you know how to do math because all we've done here is basic math and we use some basic online skills. Everything I've used here on is free and online. So uh, you can do it too. If you have any questions or you have your own stories, I'd, I'd love to hear them in the comments. If, if you feel like you need some advice, um, you know, you can ping me too. I'd be more than happy to give some advice or help you run some basic calculations. Uh, but please be careful with debt. Uh, it, can be, it can definitely be dangerous and get you into a whole world of trouble. I uh, hope you're doing well. You know, take care and we'll see you next time.